What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this, one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Neo stock and what you should be looking out for for the future. I'm also going to break down what happened with Neo's latest deliveries report and what catalysts are coming out for tomorrow as we have some big data coming out, what all of this means for Neo going forward. I want to break down some more TA about uh, SPY and the QQQ and Tesla and talk about some other very big factors. But before I bring anything down about all this information, before I talk about what's going on with NEO and what happened with their delivery numbers, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I am not a financial planner. Take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link down below in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account, you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla or Neo share. If you put in $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks and the offer ends very soon. So anyways, when it comes to NEO, uh, NEO did manage to close green thanks to the market pumping and thanks to this like technical setup we have on it because I called out the potential bullish divergence that was developing and that's why NEO is starting to bounce a bit. However, that is not necessarily a good sign uh, after what just happened. I mean, yes, it bouncing is good, but what I'm trying to say is that does not mean that NEO you know, did well for its deliveries to cause it to bounce. In fact, Neo's deliveries were pretty horrible. In my opinion, to be blunt and honest, uh, looking at this data, Neo came down all the way down to $7. It opened very horribly, it tanked in the morning, but then it got a nice bounce afterwards to get bought up at these dips. Now, why am I saying what I just said? Well, let's look at the data. Neo has a total of 333,410 deliveries in total. That's their cumulative deliveries as of May 31st, 2023. However, overall, it's still not looking that great once you break down the numbers. We got only 6,155 vehicles delivered in May of 2023. That's 43,000 deliveries year to date, 15.8% increase year over year. But then you have to consider that there were lockdowns in China last year uh, during this time frame, and yet they're still comparing it to that. And overall, it's just not a very, very good report in my opinion. Now, let me show you the numbers and the charts. It's going to make a lot more sense why I'm saying this. 6,255 deliveries in May. That's down 8% from April. That's despite the ES6 launching. But NEO is now focusing on the new platforms and new models that it's going to be using. Despite that, many of their cars are quite luxurious. And... Neo has not participated in what William Lee Bin called the price wars that Tesla was uh, participating in. What else is becoming a little disappointing is how the CEO kept telling us that we should be expecting well over 200,000 deliveries for the year. And we're halfway done with the year almost, and they're still doing 6,000 a month. So like I said, guys, not very good. Now look at the numbers right here. This compares to different years. Notice how high these green bars are from 2022. They were doing very well then, right? During this beginning phase, they weren't doing as well because of the lockdowns right here. Remember the lockdowns last year in China? And when you look at this, check this out. The yellow bars are for 2023 right here. So 2023 are the yellow bars. Let's see if I can zoom into this a little bit. Okay, so January wasn't that great. They had a very strong February. So they were doing fine in the very beginning for the first three months of the year. First quarter, very good. March was over 10,000. April was a little bit weak, 6,600, but they still beat last year's. And they came very close to 2021. It wasn't that horrible. And now we're seeing another decline for May. What else is not good about this is this is worse than 2022. This is worse than 2021 right? Very, very low deliveries. One of the lowest we've seen Neo do in a very, very long time. And even during the lockdowns, right? They did better compared to this. So it's not good whatsoever. You could see this is from their official website and also their Twitter page. Hopefully you guys can see the numbers. So basically just remember the months January through May. I'm going to go up a little bit. January, pretty decent. They had Lunar New Year, so that slowed them down a little bit. Very strong February. March was decent, like I said. And then you can see right here for April and May, 
comparing them to the previous year, just not looking too great. So now the question is, what is the CEO going to do about this? What is Neil going to do about this? The answer is they have to get deliveries up somehow. And how could you achieve that? Well, basic supply and demand economics tells you if you're trying to sell something and you're not getting sales, no matter how luxurious and how great your product is, it shows that the brand loyalty is not the same as that of something like Tesla. It, not, it really isn't, but it has potential to become that way. And to improve these margins, not the margins, like their sales, they may have to cut into their margins the way Tesla has been doing it alongside many other companies out there. Because demand, yes, demand is slowing, but demand itself is not the bigger issue because we're seeing other companies like BYD, you know, they're setting new records, you know, Lee Auto as well. Tesla is killing it in China. At least so far they have been. Because when you look at this, BYD sets a new May record while Neo is slipping. So what does this tell us? Neo needs to take a bigger risk. That includes cutting prices. I think that's going to be one of the biggest solutions to start bringing up their sales. Would they rather just continue to give us these low deliveries and disappoint lots of investors and not make as much revenue in the process? Or would they rather just cut their margins a bit temporarily during these harder times, take the risk and find a way to get more sales because you could end up meeting the same amount of revenue and profits or not profits, but you know, like revenue. How? By cutting into your margins a bit to drive up more sales. There could be this equilibrium in the market that they could try to aim for because lots of competitors are giving cheaper cars which people are willing to pay for and the spending power and capabilities of the people there are just not the same as what they once were. So it's something Neo has to work on. A lot of improvement has to be made. And if William Lee Bin keeps saying that, you know, Neo is not going to be participating in the price wars. That does not mean Neo is a dead company. Okay, it does not mean that. What it means is Neo is going to take a risk that may not work in their benefit, and it's going to take this company a lot longer to reach the, you know, potential it has, the full potential, and it's going to take a lot longer. Okay, that's what I'm seeing from this, but I still remain optimistic because. I'm really hoping the CEO does something new about this. I'm hoping the board does something new because they'd be fools for trying the same thing twice and expecting different results. The product alone is not everything. The product, the product alone is impactful, but it's not everything during you know, these potential recessionary environments we're about to enter among the different countries around the world. And I think they have to change something something very big and fundamental, even if it means taking a bigger risk and eating into some margins. It might just be worth it, and they should at least try. Now, I also want to add that Neo has potential moving forward. It still does. I have not lost faith in this company. But for the short term, for the next few months, you know, the environment is just getting worse for them. Them maintaining these high prices in this type of environment it's not helping them. So something has to be done. Now, anyways, I want to talk about the market now. Let me just note that Dell had earnings. They beat on earnings, actually. They did quite well on EPS and revenue. That is good for the tech sector. Initial jobless claims were very close to expectations, but not uh, that impactful for the market. The market did drop a tiny bit once this data came out. And we had some Fed speakers coming out today saying that the Fed could pause in June. And there's a lot of work to be done. For tomorrow, we have big data. We have the unemployment data coming out alongside non-farm payrolls and the participation rate. This is all going to be very important an hour before the market opens, so make sure you watch for all this data. The market will respond to this. Finally, we have the debt ceiling coming out. This is going to be huge. Okay, With the debt ceiling bill passing the Senate, we need the Senate to vote for it. And the Senate may vote tonight, according to Schumer. If that ends up being the case, and they vote in favor of it, this could cause the market to pump. If they delay it, it may not be as helpful for the markets, but overall, things are looking good. Now, for NEO, we had high volume, I believe, because we sold off pretty hard in the beginning. Then we got a nice bounce, well above average. And if we maintain high volume, if the market continues to pump, this could help NEO to some degree. 
Neo already dropped pretty hard before the report, and it still has a bullish divergence. Uh, the data looks the same as yesterday. Nothing new is developing here, except Fridays tend to be green about 53% of the time, so Neo tends to do better on these Fridays. And the short interest on Neo has been at this high level as of like two days ago. We saw about 13 million Neo shares shorted. So we'll see what happens with that moving forward. As far as the data goes, let me just mention that the market could respond to the data, the unemployment numbers, and uh, what happens with the Senate very differently. If we're bullish on SPY, we need to break 423. If we break it, we're going to see 426 or so, or even higher than that. Uh, if it breaks 426, 430 will come. If we're bearish, watch 420, 418, I'm uh, sorry, 419, then 418, which is where the 50 EMA is, and even lower levels, but I don't really see us crashing that hard. Unless something catastrophic happens, which I doubt at this point, I think the odds are favoring a more strong move to the upside, especially because of all the puts expiring. If Tesla's bullish, it needs to break and hold 207.5. If it breaks that, there's some resistance around this 208 area. There's a little bit of resistance there. If it breaks that, so then we're going to be watching this 209 to 210 zone. Res resistance is a little bit stronger there. If it breaks this, I still think Tesla has potential to do so if the market pumps especially. You could see 212.5. 214 and those are going to be some important resistance levels if 214 breaks i mean it could even get to this very strong resistance around uh i believe it was the high to 216 to about 217.8 this is going to be a major resistance zone if tesla does break above 214 but for now let's just watch these supporting resistance levels if it comes down we have some support at around uh, 207 and if 207 fails us we have 205 to 204 this is zone right over here if that fails us then you know it could drop a little lower it's like 202 then 200 flat uh, i don't see tesla dropping that hard it's holding up quite nicely and the chart's looking bullish but we'll see what the data causes just watch these levels i am leaning more bullish though for the qqq we got to break 253 to 254 if we break that we're going to see 255.5 and if that breaks we could get closer to 258 if that breaks then there's did I say two? I'm in three. So replace every two with the three. Sorry, guys. There's three, five, uh, three to 354, 355, 358, and then 360 on the QQQ. I do apologize. If we end up coming down, make sure you watch 350 on the QQQ. If 350 fails us, watch the 200 and the 50 EMAs. Specifically, the 50 is very strong on the one hour time frame. If that fails us, then there's going to be the mid 240s. I'm not leaning more bearish. I'm leaning more bullish for the markets. I mean, looking at the setups, we may cool off in the morning based off this small bearish divergence that developed right here. So a slight cool off in the morning is fine. Uh, by the pre-market, by the time the market opens, it's going to depend on the data. The market could still balance. And we could still see shorts get squeezed, by right? short covering and things like that. For NEO, I'm in the middle. I mean, 7.5 is where we have some nice support. If it breaks above this, we're going to be watching resistance at 7.64, followed by 7.8, then $8. If we're bearish, NEO is going to have support 7.5, 7.4, 7.25, followed by $7 flat. Now, even though NEO had some pretty bad numbers, they weren't the best, NEO has a bullish divergence in the chart that's still valid, and it got a nice bounce here, and it finally made a higher high and higher low as of right now. So the odds favor Neo trying to push back to about 7.8 or so. I'm leaning a little bit more bullish on it, but watch the chart and watch the data tomorrow for confirmation. All right, so that's what I have for this video. I'm sorry if I made you feel uh, kind of sad or I'm not trying to be pessimistic about the company. I'm still very bullish on Neo because I believe it's going to make a big comeback moving forward. But for now, in the current time, the numbers are just not the best and Neo has a lot of work to do to improve nevertheless. All right, that's what I have for this one. Get ready for tomorrow for the big data. Neo to the moon is the long term is very bright. And don't forget about the Moomoo link. The offer ends very soon. And I have some merch for you guys around the comment section. If you want to buy a hoodie, a tank top, or uh, a t-shirt that says to the moon or buy the dip, it's your choice. But anyways, I just appreciate all of you. Neo to the moon alongside the market. And peace out.